Hello. So my name is Martin Stock from SGS TÜV. As you can see here, this is an older picture of me. It's not representing the truth. Uh, so it changed a lot. So we heard a lot of tools today. And I want to talk about how to ensure or how to make, to provide evidence that uh, the outcome of these tools is useful and uh, is safe. And uh, for that, I want to talk about the confidence in the use of software tools for SOTIF related applications. So we start with a short introduction, uh, talk about tools, what are tools, then we talk about the confidence in the use of software tools coming from ISO 26262. And then I provide a very, very rough example for an automated driving system. And we close it with a summary. So let's talk about tools. The topic tools is very old. Also, Mr. Goethe talked about that long ago. And he said, a man who thinks he's doing the right thing must use the best tools. And I think this is also uh, valid for today. So let's talk about some definitions. First, what is a software tool? And ISO 26262 part one says a software tool is a computer program, which could be a design, write, modify, and test program used in the development of an item or element, or of course, a function. Uh, there is a standard which has been withdrawn, uh, but uh, the definition of the computer program is still valid. It's the ISO IEC 23821. Uh, uh, and it says a computer program is a syntactic unit that conforms to the rules of a particular programming language and that is composed of declarations and statements or instructions needed to solve a certain function, task, or even a problem. So computer programs help us to solve problems, to support us to create functions or to fulfill tasks. Of course, an item uh, defined in ISO 26262 part one is a system or combination of system to which ISO 26262 is applied and that implements a function or part of a function at the vehicle level. So an item is the EE part of a vehicle level function. A vehicle level function is a function which is, as it said, on the vehicle level. So something which can be observed and felt by the driver. So the vehicle is doing something, for example, which is not expected by the driver, and this, that relates in a risk. Yeah, and at least an element is a system or components and consists at least of hardware, software, hardware parts, or software units. So a software tool is a computer program which supports us in the development of an item or the elements of the item. The point is it supports. We don't have a tool where we push a button and the finished system is the outcome. It only supports us for activities which are relevant from the safety or SOTIF perspective. So a software tool used in the development of a system or its software or hardware can support the activities and tasks required by ISO 26262, and of course, ISO 21448, so also for SOTIF. Yeah, tools at FUSA and SOTIF. So what you see here is, we have uh, the V model of ISO 26262 with our very known activities or work products, item definition, HARA, FSC, TSC, hardware, software, development, integration, testing, validation, the assessment, and the decommissioning. And below that, you see the activities of ISO 21448, so the activities of the SOTIF standard. And what you really shall do in the beginning is that you align your SOTIF activities with the activities of ISO 26262, 
and use the V model and the life cycle of ISO 26262 as the spline where everything is binded on. And when I want to develop a system which is functionally safe, and of course safe from the perspective of SOTIF, I can use tools to support these activities. And there I have, for example, tools for our project management or our safety management. So these are tools which help me to uh, create safety plans, project plans, configuration management, and so on. And we have tools, for example, for our requirements engineering. And the outcome of these tools, for example, are ODD and scenarios, or the HARA with uh, the acceptance criteria from the SOTIF perspective, or the safety goals from ISO 26262 perspective. Then we have tools for the development of architectures and models. And the outcome of these tools are, of course, architectures and models, or more specific decision algorithms for automated driving systems. Then we have tools for integration and testing. And the outcome is integration and testing, for example, by simulation. And at the end, of course, we need to validate everything. So we will have tools for validation. And uh, here, for example, we can use the scenario-based evaluation from uh, standards like ISO 34502, for example. So we have um, the V model of ISO 26262. We have the activities and tasks from the SOTIF standard. And we have a tool chain which is supporting all of these activities with uh, work products, uh, which supports the work products of the standards. And of course, the basic standards like ISO 26262 or SOTIF is not providing everything we need to solve especially automated driving systems problem. Therefore, a lot of other standards are still um, in the preparing for example, for ODDs and also for scenario-based evaluation, we have the ISO 34503, which provides us a taxonomy for ODD. And this is exactly what will help us in the future when we want to create outcomes of tools which can be used in a tool chain uh, and be handed over from tool one to tool two Standards like ISO 34503 with a taxonomy are helping me to uh, create work products, to create outcomes which can be used by several tools. So how to prove that? How to increase the confidence in the use of software tools? Of course, therefore, we have ISO 26262 Part 8, Clause 11. And the objectives here are, first, to provide criteria to determine the required level of confidence in the software tool when applicable, and provide means for the qualification of software tool when applicable in order to create evidence that the tool is suitable to be used to support the activities or tasks required by ISO 26262 series of standards, and of course now, the ISO 21448. So in ISO 21448, for example, in Annex D, we have this uh, requirement here, tools used as part of the offline training process can be handled by ISO 26262 Part 8, Clause 11. So, the SOTIF standard is not requiring it as a mandatory aspect, but uh, this is a general problem with the SOTIF standard. The SOTIF standard is very high level, and let me say it's more a should than a shell standard in, in, in most aspects. But of course, what is good for ISO 26262 when I want to safeguard my activities from functional safety, of course I can use the same tools or methods to 
to safeguard my SOTIP related activities. So, how to do that? And here uh, I've taken the picture of ISO 26262 part 8, figure 3, with some additions. So, what we have is when we use a tool, we have a user environment. And what we need to do is first, before we decide that this will, shall be solved by a tool or which tool shall solve the problems, I need to do an evaluation. And a tool evaluation means that I first define the problem, what I want to solve. Yeah? I'm not buying a tool and, and uh, putting it on, on problems and hope everything fits. First, I need to know the problem. And when I know the problem, then I can decide for a correct tool. And what I need to do there is, first, I need to plan the usage of the software tool in accordance with uh, clause 11441. So I have to define the environment in which the software tool is executed, for example, and of course, the maximum ASL. Then I have to evaluate the usage of the software tool, so the features, functions, and technical properties, uh, and so on. And then I have to evaluate the tool by analyzers, following clause 11.4.5.1. So here I define the intended purpose, the inputs, and the expected outputs, and so on. Then, when I have defined all that, I am able to evaluate the tool by evaluating the tool impact, TI, and the tool error detection, TD. And based on that, with help of the ASL, I have a tool confidence level, and based on the results, I have to do a qualification or not. So this is what I do first. First, I define the problem, and I define which problems needs to be solved with the tool. Then, I start the selection of an existing tool, or I decide to uh, create a new tool when there is no tool in the market which solves my problems sufficiently, for example. This is on the user level. And then on the level of uh, the tool development level, I uh, do a tool development and maintenance based, of course, on uh, the inputs which have been identified in the tool evaluation. And the outcome of it is a tool with its documentation and of course, if applicable, a pre-qualification evidence. So this is what uh, a lot of tool vendors are doing, uh, a third-party evaluation for their tool. This is a pre-qualification. Of course, what you need to prove is that this pre-qualification fits with the needs you have. Yeah, when I've done this, I integrate and qualify the tool for its intended user environment. So I take the tool, integrate it into my development activities, and then I qualify it uh, for its intended user environment. So is the tool really solving my problems, yes or no? And then at the end, we have a tool which can be applied and used in projects. So this is the procedure of tool confidence evaluation. And uh, this evaluation or qualification flow is, as I said before, based on the tool impact, TI. So that means I need to evaluate, has the tool or outcome, the work products of the tool, an input on my safety of the product, yes or no? And I prove the so-called tool error detection. So are there faults induced by the tool or by the user of the tool, which can lead to uh, errors? And how good am I to identify these errors? So how possible is it that I find or um, yeah, um, evaluate all faults which can happen by the tool or by the user so that no faulty results will uh, come into the product. 
So based on that, I came to the tool confidence level, TCL. And then I have to prove is the qualification needed, yes or no. And the qualification is required for a TCL equal or higher than two. So for TCL two and three, I need to do a qualification. If I have evaluated the TCL one, no qualification is required, so I can finish uh, everything and uh, can go on. But when we have evaluated a TCL two or three, and uh, with the ASL as an input, I need to qualify the tool with appropriate degree of rigor. Yeah? So, for TCL2 and 3, which is TI2, TD2, uh, and TI2, TD3, when I have evaluated that, I have to do something. This is for the ISO 26262 approach. And of course, for SOTIF related applications, I normally don't have an ASL. But what I do is I do a HARA. And I evaluate the parameters severity, exposure, and controllability, S, E, and C. And based on that, I can indirectly evaluate the ASL. Yeah? So, of course, I don't use the ASL for SOTIF, but I can use this SE3 evaluation to have an imaginary ASL to use this as an input uh, to identify the TCL. So, when I have identified that I am TCL2 or 3, I know I have to do something. And uh, ISO 26262 is providing methods which are ASL dependent for TCL2 and 3. And there are four methods. First method is increased confidence from use. Second is evaluation of the tool development process. Then we have validation of the software tool. And at the end, development in accordance with a safety standard like ISO 26262. I have asked a question on LinkedIn, and I've asked the question, which method, a method you, will pref you would prefer for automated driving systems? And this was the outcome. So the loser was evaluation of the development process. So there is no trust in audits anymore. Then we have on uh, part three, increased confidence from use, of course, for automated driving functions or models and simulations. I don't can use or apply that because we are all at the starting point. We have not much experience on that. So this method cannot be used. And uh, yeah, on the first place, we have two winners. First is validation of the software tool and development in accordance with the safety standard. So my preference was that, validation. And from my perspective, validation of the software tool with respect to automated driving functions and the new problems we have, this is for me the only method which is sufficient to prove if the confidence in the software tool is good enough or not. So for SOTIF related applications, not all methods are sufficient to increase the confidence in the use of software tools. From my personal perspective and from my experience, I would prefer that uh, method validation of the software tool. Maybe you have another opinion, of course. Uh, we can discuss it later. But this is my favorite, let me say like that. So, let's talk about this in practice. I have an example, uh, a tool for simulations of a sensor model used for automated driving systems. And step one is a tool evaluation, yeah, some exemplary selections. So the intended purpose is simulation of a sensor model which is used for the perception of an automated driving system, SAE level four, so for example, a highway pilot. Um, yeah, it looks like that. So we have uh, a virtual 
a model and we have a camera simulation and at the end uh, we have to compare it with the real world. So the tool impact, of course, from my perspective, is a two. So errors within the model can lead to misinterpretations in real-world driving scenarios. And this is an increase of the unknown hazardous scenarios, which is area three scenarios from the SOTIF perspective. And we have a TD3, because during the development, these errors cannot be identified sufficiently. And I think that was also the conclusion of most of the presentations we had before. I know I can do simulations, but the answer of the question, do I have done enough or when I have done enough, cannot be answered. So I'm, I'm not able to find and identify all errors there. So I say it's a TD3. And uh, that leads us to a TCL3 for these kind of tools. And we assume an ASIL, yeah? It's not a real ASIL because we are in SOTIF, yeah? But based on a, a, a SOTIF HARA, we have evaluated S3, E3, and C3, for example. So this is an exemplary selection of the tool evaluation. So we have the TCL, and now we have to yeah, look for the qualification of this tool and how we can do this qualification. So due to TCL3, of course, we know qualification of the tool is necessary. And for TCL3 and ASIL-C, there are two methods which can be used from the ISO 26262 perspective. This is method 1C, validation of the software tool, or 1D, development in accordance with the safety standard. And as I said before, I prefer this validation aspect, so I choose the validation of the software tool here. How to do that? For the validation, of course, I can also take my ISO 26262, part four, uh, clause 742, integration and testing on hardware software level, 743, system integration and testing, and 744, vehicle integration and testing. So for validating, I choose the methods I know from ISO 26262 part four. And for example, in, in our case, um, for, with respect to the evaluated TCL and the ASIL we have, we can use back-to-back -back tests, yeah? So because we've done simulation, and what we do is we compare the results of the simulation with real-world scenarios. So what I can do is I can simulate a scenario I already know and can drive this scenario in the real world and I can look if there are deviations between the outcome of the simulation and the outcome of the real-world scenario. What I can also do is, of course, fault injection testing based on the analysis of uh, functional insufficiencies and triggering conditions, I can inject faults in my sensor model where uh, faults which I know can happen, for example, for the camera. For aging effects, like, for example, or uh, uh, glaring effects, yeah? or heavy rain, heavy snow, and so on. Yeah? I, can, I can induce these faults, like uh, noises, and I can see if um, the, um, yeah, the system is, uh, the tool is providing the correct results or not. Or error guessing, of course, when I have enough experience with several uh, similar projects or products, I can use also error guessing. So, what I want to demonstrate here is that you can use what is already specified in the standards, ISO 26262, and in the SOTIF standards, and apply that also for problems which you have, for example, with respect to automated driving systems. Of course, the basic standards, ISO 26262, SOTIF, and security, are not solving every problem. Yeah? That's why a lot of additional standards are still in preparation. 
like ISO Pass 8800 for uh, AI or ISO TS 5083 for automated driving system safety in general. But you can do a lot of, let me say, basic works with help of uh, the standards which are already available. So, summary of that. In accordance with ISO 21448, Annex A.2.9, confidence in the use of software tools, in accordance with ISO 26262 Part 8, Clause 11, can be applied to the tools relevant to achieve SOTIF with a few adaptions. I think it's more than few. <laughs> Um, because the problems we solve with SOTIF are completely different from ISO 26262. Yeah? So we need to do some adaptions with respect to the activities and clauses of uh, ISO 21448. But the benefit is when you remember what I showed you before, when you align the activities of the SOTIF standard to the V model or life cycle of ISO 26262, um, this will make your work much easier in the future. The procedure for the classification and qualification of software tools, as specified in Part 8, Clause 11, can be used without any changes. So the procedure for tool classification and qualification I've shown you before is the same for SOTIF. There is no change in the procedure. Only the activities and tasks which I evaluate, are different. But the procedure of uh, classifying and qualifying a tool is completely the same. And what is also a conclusion of that, not all methods for the qualification of software tools are sufficient for SOTIF. So in many cases, for example, method 1C, validation of the software tool, is the only sufficient way to increase the confidence uh, of the tools. This may change in the future when we have more experience, especially with the simulations and uh, uh, this model-based approaches, but currently in the state where we currently are, we don't have enough experience and so the choice of methods is very restricted. And there's one very important point that you never forget when we talk about tools. A fool with a tool is still a fool. Thank you for your attention. Do you have questions? So, do you have any questions? Yeah, Oskar Sotos from Validas. Uh, thanks a lot for your presentation, walking through most of uh, or many of the requirements. I just want to disagree with the point that a TCL1 tool, you don't need to do anything. From the ISO 262 perspective, not. No. Not even there, because there's a requirement stating that you have to use the tool as classified, meaning if you classify a tool as a TCL1, this means don't trust this tool, detect all potential errors of the tool on your own. So you usually create a safety manual and hand it over to the tool user, and he has to follow it. Yeah, and and what does TCL1 mean? TCL1 means that, that uh, I have high confidence in that I'm really good in identifying faults which can be introduced by the tool, or there are not so many faults which can introduce. So uh, there is trust in the tool. That's why we have a TCL1. Yeah, but that's why you cannot trust the tool, and the confidence from using the tool comes from the safety manual. Yeah. Usually, and that's, that's the idea, um, and then you have to follow it, and sometimes this can be worse than qualifying the tool. So, uh, yeah. I agree here. I, I agree on that, and what you see, this method is, like a lot of methods in safety, is very subjective. Yeah? So, when you are doing that, uh, of course, uh, uh, there are people who try to bring the results down to a TCL1 to, to reduce the amount of, of measures. So typical TCL1 argumentation would be back-to-back -back comparison. But then you have to really do the back-to-back -back -back comparison for every simulation, which is not what people like to do. So back-to-back -back is a qualification method for validation. Can be both, yes. 
how can I use this as an argument to reduce the TCL? That's, I can do the same and I say, oh, I'm so good, I reduce, there's normally an ASL D, but because of my measures, it's ASL A. The, the, we don't do that. Yeah? This is a misinterpretation from my perspective. Thank you. We have another question. Yeah, this is Bernhard Kaiser from ANSYS. First, thank you for the very interesting presentation. I have a question, or it's, it's actually even, even two on the interpretation. So uh, first you said uh, everything begins with understanding the usage context, the goals with the tools. I think it's very important, but it's also quite difficult if you are a tool manufacturer for such a complex tool chain. You cannot know all the use cases that customers may want to do in the future. So my question to you, would you agree that it can be helpful to mix in some elements of the safety element out of context approach, which means making assumptions, qualifying against assumptions, and later ask the future customers, is this assumption true or not? Of course, with some risk that uh, you were totally wrong then. This was my first question. The second question is, uh, you said you would like to apply uh, the methods from 26.26.2 in a modified fashion to the SOTIF. And when you say things like error guessing or fault injection, do you mean then these words in a generalized sense, so a fault is not necessarily a fault, but can also be a bad triggering condition like rain or snow or whatever from environment? Yeah. So to your first question, of course I support this uh, SEOC approach, because what works for, for functions may also work for a tool. Uh, at the end, uh, and this is for every SEOC development, we have to see where my assumptions good enough or not. And uh, uh, so what we need is, for example, I think first we need to define everybody together. What are the problems we need to solve? And then we need to identify how can we solve this problem? And then everybody can go his own way. But First, we need to answer, let me say, some high-level questions that everybody is on the same direction. And when we have reached that, I think it will be also much more easier for tool vendors like you. And the second question, of course, when I talk about fault injection, for SOTA we don't have faults like a, uh, like a random hardware fault, a, a shortcut or something like that. Here we have, let me say, triggering conditions. Yeah, could be a single point triggering condition or a multiple point triggering condition. And these triggering conditions are similar as a fault in the hardware, have the same output, or, uh, the same outcome. It leads to a violation of something on the high level. In the sort of case, uh, I will violate my acceptance criteria, for example. So that's all. Thank you for the presentation. One more question. Okay, last one. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I, I want to understand how exactly you are going to increase confidence using the back-to-back -back test. Because let's say I want to use this simulation tool. The main purpose is I want to reduce uh, testing effort, yeah, let's say. So which means you, if, we, if you want to use this validation method to evaluate the conf uh, to increase the confidence, you need to actually do also a normal validation on the real test, and then you have to compare it. So in that case, if I have a new scenario, do I need to repeat this always? So first is, what do I want to prove? I want to prove if my tool is, is uh, providing me results which are good enough. I think that this is the intention of that, what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing the validation. So how I can do that? Of course, um, I want to see how good is the tool. So what I can use, I can use a scenario where I know exactly what the outcome shall be. So, for example, in the ISO uh, 34503, we have some standard scenarios like the Michigan, Mi uh, Michigan turn, or there are some, some specific scenarios we have always. Yeah? So we know how the system should react on that, and then we provide this scenario to the tool and see if the outcome matches with the expected outcome. This is a way how I can prove if my tool is providing stable and valid results.
So does that mean I don't need to revalidate with the new scenarios? Okay. Yeah. As one option, of course. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you very much.